Season 2 of Fortnite Battle Royale is finally here and we're going to be taking a look at the patch notes for version 1.11 uh, that released on December the 14th. So let's go ahead and get started. What is going on guys, BSD Spear here back with another Fortnite Battle Royale video. So if you guys are like me, you've been enjoying Fortnite, as you guys know I'm fairly new to the game, I've only played it for a couple of weeks now, but I'm definitely uh, seeing myself improve and get better at the game, and I'm hoping to dive in with these patch notes so I can really see uh, what they're tweaking and changing, so I'll be ready for that in the future. So like I said, uh, Season 2 starts today with the version 1.11, and we're going to be quickly going over the patch notes. There's a lot of stuff here, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so first up with the highlights, the Season 2 of Battle Royale begins on December the 14th. The Season Store is going to be replaced with the Season 2 Battle Pass. Uh, now basically the Battle Pass, uh, they said that it's basically a quicker way to get all of your cosmetic items. I believe you can earn items uh, in game, uh, but it will take quite a bit of gameplay to unlock these items. So if you buy the Battle Pass, you can get all these items uh, right away, including cosmetic um, armor suits, um, pickaxes probably, and emotes as well they showcased. Um, so it's definitely pretty cool. It also says get in the holiday spirit update includes the limited time snowball grenade launcher, a festive battle bus, and other gifts waiting for you around the island. Uh, also, it has new emotes and emoticons which can be earned as rewards via the battle pass or they can be purchased in the shop and you can equip up to six and trigger them in game with either B on the keyboard or down on the D-pad. So definitely pretty cool stuff, uh, interesting to see how this plays out. All right, now moving on to the gameplay fixes uh, or changes they're making. Compete in solos or with friends to complete the two new daily quests. So there are two new daily quests. Uh, there's top 50 solo and there's top 12 in squads. They also updated a few daily quests such as search chests. Uh, the amount changed from 5 to 7. Search ammo boxes changed from 10 to 7. Uh, pistol eliminations changed from 3 to 2. And anyone already on these quests will, will have their progress reset. Uh, they also added support for 21 by 9 displays and any ultra, ultra wide uh, resolutions. They added animations for sliding down cliff sides, which is pretty interesting. Uh, added animations to turn head to reticle while sprinting diagonal. And the Combat Pro uh, controller configuration will now be the default configuration for new players. Alright, so moving on to the bug fixes that they did change. They fixed an issue that caused actual damage dealt to not match up with the damage numbers on screen. Uh, floating damage numbers would sometimes be one digit higher than the actual damage dealt due to rounding issues. Uh, chests no longer appear unopened at a distance when they have already been looted. Uh, fixed an issue that prevented players from picking up items that overlapped looted chests and ammo crates, because uh, that was getting kind of annoying. Uh, build mode blueprints are now hidden after using a launch pad and while DBNO um, fixed an issue that prevented players from taking fall damage if they had uh, one HP remaining, fixed a broken animation that occurred while switching between certain equip times, fixed the Renegade Raider outfit's head so it doesn't clip through the helmet anymore, character models now animate properly when rotating in place, fixed an issue that allowed players to search items like bushes and furniture causing them to wiggle and play an audio cue. These types of items are now only searchable in the Save the World co-op mode and they also reduced aim assist prioritizing uh, DBNO players. Alright, so moving on to the weapon section of the patch notes, uh, we have when throwing grenades a trajectory will now be visible that previews the arc uh, the grenade will follow, uh, so that's actually really helpful. I renamed some weapons uh, for consistency. Uh, assault rifle scope is now assault rifle with scope. Assault rifle burst is now burst assault rifle. Submachine gun suppressor is now suppressed submachine gun. Legendary assault rifle drop rate decreased by 25% in floor loot and chests. Uh, drop rate from supply drops will be unchanged. Uh, they reduced the pump shotgun shot queuing time, uh, reduced it from 0.4 to 0.2 seconds. It's now the same as all other weapons. This will reduce the chance that players will misfire the weapon, and they updated the icon for the standard grenade. Alright, so moving on to the bug fixes for the weapons, we have removed controller aim assist, slow while scoped. Uh, this will make it easier to use sniper rifles with a controller, 
um, because that was getting pretty difficult. Um, pump shotgun now correctly cues shots the same as all other weapons, reducing chances of an accidental extra shot being fired. Um, sniper rifle projectiles no longer pass through other players under non-ideal network conditions. So basically if they're lagging, uh, your sniper rifle will no longer pass through other players. It should deal damage if it's a hit. Uh, hit impacts from a sniper rifle play on the correct location of the enemy player now. Fixed an issue that allows bullets to pass through uh, player built pyramid structures. Fixed an issue causing smoke beams to not play when weapons were fired. Alright, so next up for the UI fixes, they improve the game mode selection flow and UI. This should make it easier to select a game mode with a controller. Uh, when opening your inventory, the mouse cursor will now always appear in the center of the screen on PC and Mac. Code of conduct is now displayed directly in the game UI rather than opening an external page. And the inspect button for Battle Royale daily challenges has been moved to the bottom bar. Alright, so for the bug fixes as far as UI goes, uh, they fixed an issue causing the push to talk binding from being removed when selecting the reset to default button in the save the world setting. Using the report player option in duo or squads will now autofill with the name of the player that eliminated you instead of your teammate's name. They fixed some missing localized text in various languages, fixed an issue that prevented the daily challenges scroll bar from working with the controller, improved visibility of the number of players remaining on each team in the 50 versus 50 mode, fixed an issue that caused some options in the settings menu to disappear when the player was eliminated while the setting menu was open, and they fixed an issue that caused players health and shield bars to appear empty on the victory screen. Alright, so moving on to performance changes, uh, various optimizations to interactive objects such as doors to improve overall frame rate, uh, minor frame rate improvements by optimizing weapons, eliminated many hitches which could happen the first time you encountered a player's skin or weapon in a match, fixed an issue with particles that cause hitching as the day time of day changes. Uh, improved server performance by optimizing how physics is updated, fixed performance issues with ladybug ambient particles in the world, fixed an issue with the storm safe zones that could cause poor server performance, greatly reduced the CPU usage of in-game party and chat systems, fixed an issue with the memory allocator on Xbox One and PC which caused degraded CPU performance, they improved the CPU rendering performance on Xbox One and PC, PS4 and Xbox One X scale, scalability, uh, scalability uh, tweaks to improve CPU performance under heavy load. Next up for match stats, view match results is now bound uh, to V by default, so that has to deal with the um, PC version, but some bug fixes uh, fix an issue causing the total XP earned on the match stats screen to be inaccurate, uh, traps now add to the assists and damage dealt stats, fix an issue that incorrectly gave an assist credit to a player for simply hitting another player with a pickaxe before being eliminated. Uh, total headshots is now equal to the number of headshots achieved instead of the amount of headshot damage that the player dealt. Fix an issue that caused the damage taken stat to be less than 100 after being eliminated. Shots fired during the warm up zone no longer affect the player's accuracy stat. Uh, fixed an issue that incorrectly awarded the first kill XP bonus to every player that got an elimination during the match. And projectile weapons will now add to the accuracy hits and critical hits stats. And finally for the social aspect of the patch notes, they added the ability to invite players to your party through discord on PC, added full voice chat support to the Mac, and enabled, enabled Twitch login support for Battle Royale. And some fixes as far as social goes, they fixed an issue preventing players from connecting to the friends only leaderboards and fixed a crash related to the voice chat feature. So overall, a lot of changes are being made uh, on Fortnite Battle Royale. A lot of tweaking, a lot of tuning, um, a little bit of uh, nerfs here and there, but a lot of bug fixes, which is definitely a good thing. Um, definitely really enjoying this game, and I'm looking forward to this Season 2 um, Battle Pass, seeing what more you can do with it, as well as the holiday-themed weapons and armor sets, uh, or I guess costumes, not really armor sets. Uh, but overall, it's going to be a lot of fun playing some more Fortnite Battle Royale. So, as always guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, if it helped you out at all, be sure to smack that like button. It really helps this channel grow. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here for more Fortnite news updates uh, and Fortnite funny moments and videos such as that. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm BSD Spear.
and I'm out. Thanks for watching.